Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome back to my shop and we have a fantastic day planned for you because my wife Sarah is Yay. here with us. Um, so if you want to join in the chat and ask her questions behind my back, I have the chat here, I can watch it, but I'm gonna be working You're on this. You're not that so. best. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, it is very good to have her back because we have been, it's been what, three weeks since you've been back? If you count At last least. week. Um, so if you have any questions for her, let her know. Uh, if you have questions for me, let her know, and then she'll try and fit them in when it is appropriate. Uh, so today we are actually going to be working on the joinery window. This is a project we have been working on for a while. It is basically this paneled, four panel thing that has, uh, it has uh, six boards and nine joints. And it's a great way to practice joinery uh, because it's got nine different joints to all come together and make this, well, kind of like a window. Um, and if any of the joints are off in a way, then you're going to have problems fitting other ones in the future. So in the past, we have made the simple half lap. Uh, we have made the bridle joint. We have made the center half lap. Uh, we've made the mortise and tenon, a traditional mortise and tenon. And today we're going to be working on the next one, which is actually going to be the dovetail. In particular, we're going to be doing a dovetail half lap. Uh, so let me switch over to this one so you can see a little bit easier. Oop, two. Have I been on two the whole time? Or just switch? You just switched. Oh, good. I got, I have some, uh, here, I, uh, I have some new uh, equipment here. Um, so things might actually be working a little bit better. I'm missing one piece in the chain, um, but I've fixed the problems that I had last week. So if you came in last week, um, I'm sorry for all the problems that we had, um, but uh, we'll be working on that. So I do have some new equipment. So if you see me kind of figuring this out, hopefully my mouth is actually in time with the video which would be like miraculous, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know if that is one of the fun problems with having multiple cameras. Uh, so let's do this. So here is the window we're working on and today we're gonna be working on this dovetail half lap. And basically that is going to be this board. We're gonna put a tail on here and then into the pins on this board. So this will sink down into that. Now, one of the things we have to think about is that this board needs to be the same. It needs to be the same distance along this board that I have this mark here. So we need to make sure that these two are parallel, but as well as the other boards that will be going along it are also parallel to this. Um, so in this case, I need to make sure that the joint in this board is the same distance from this end as the joint in this board. And that's the same distance along as the joint in this board from this end to here. And so I'm gonna be kind of working through this to make sure that all of these line up. Um, but to be particular, I'm going to get rid of these ones that I don't need so that I'm not getting confused. And today we're just going to be working on this. Now, because I am a tails first kind of guy, we're going to make a tail on this joint first. And it uh, looks like everything's working audio-wise, so uh, unless we have some problem, um, which if there's any problem, let us know and we'll try and address it. But uh, it looks like everything's working. So um, first thing I want to do is make the tails on this board over here. Change this camera a little bit. Woo, HDMI down, there we go. And there we go. Uh, so I need to find out, first of all, how far into this do I need to cut? Because I'm basically we're making the half lap joint um, that we did on this, um, but doing it here. And one side, rather than it being just a half lap straight across, it's going to have the dovetail key. So we're gonna start by making the half lap joint on this. And I'm gonna need this, this marking knife square and ooh, and uh, marking gauge. So what I could do is I could go off the plans on this and say two inches in, make a mark and mark it. But what if this board has swollen a little bit or changed its size ever so slightly? What I actually wanna do is use the reality of the board. How big is the board? And let me do it this way. I'm gonna Flush these up with my fingertips, make sure that everything is just the way I want it, really nice and clean, and then I'm going to use the marking gauge, marking knife to put a dent in there. Then I can bring the square over, put the marking knife into that marking knife mark I made, slide the square over to that mark, and there is that. Now I know that this mark is exactly the same as reality and I'm not going off of some measurement that might be slightly different because there is wood movement. Best chance 
of success. So I've made this mark in. This is how, how deep down we want to cut. I've carried the lines onto the sides. Now we need to figure out how, um, how big do we want to actually cut out of this. Now I could go about making this. I can put the pin where I guess is the middle. I slide the fence over. I lock it down. And then I turn this around and I see how close I am. And holy cow, that's right on. First things happen. Um, but it really doesn't matter. I can, I can make this whatever depth I want, as long as I make sure that the fence stays on the same side as the tape. And I'll do that on this board, um, as well as this board, and make sure that they, uh, they stay together. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to mark all the way along the side. Light, medium, hard. And then around the other side, making sure I keep the fence on the side with the tape. Light, medium, hard. Now we can go about cutting this out. And let me start by cutting the cheek. And to give you guys a little idea, I had the um, cheek is, uh, if you think about your head and shoulders as a tenon. Um, where is my tenon piece? There we go. So we have a tenon here. If you think about it, cutting the cheek is cutting down the side here. And then cutting the shoulder is cutting in the shoulder. Um, so just one thing to make it a little easier. I want to actually cut down the cheek of this before cutting into the shoulder. So let's set this up in a vise. And I'm going to grab my tenon saw. A tenon saw is usually a back saw uh, with a rip cut teeth and a moderately aggressive tooth for a... Uh, for a rip saw. I want to make sure I'm cutting on the right side of the line. So Moderately I'm this aggressive side of it. sounds kind of like an oxymoron. What? <laughs> Moderately aggressive. Moderately aggressive. You know, it's not like the, the big one. But... It's like semi liberal, semi conservative. <laughs> Moderately aggressive. Yes. It's. It is <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to throw politics. A moderately non aggressive. Moderately aggressive. It's. You know, there's. Uh, what does this one have? Uh, I think this one has eight. No, it's about 10, 10 teeth per inch. Um, so what I'm going to do is pinch the board here, and that pinch gives me my fingernails. And my fingernails will allow me to slide along the board so I can actually adjust the saw in or out by how much I pinch. And I'm going to start on the far side from me. Woo! And I just sharpened this, so it's a little catchy. Got to get myself used to it. I'm used to a dull saw, and so it actually, actually catches now. And so I'm going to work it back along the line. Whew. That took more work than normal, getting used to the saw again. Now I have this kerf running all the way along, and I can basically stay in that kerf, but what I want to do is cut down my side of the line so I can eyeball my side. And go down to that depth mark. Right there. Then I can turn this whole thing around and I can stay on my side of the line, which is now the other side of the line. It's amazing the difference that sharp teeth make. And once I've cut down at an angle on both sides, then I can flatten it out and cut down the rest down to depth. Man, this cherry is so nice to cut when you're used to working with oak. So now we cut the shoulder. Now we can cut the cheek. I thought you cut the cheek. I oh, see me. Now that we cut the cheek, now we can cut the shoulder. Oh, I actually knew something. That is why I have my wife here. <laughs> well, she they're talking this. about that. <laughs> <laughs> she is the brains of this here operation. So now that we used a tenon saw to cut the cheek because this has this has rip teeth because I'm cutting with the grain when I'm cutting down it. Now I want to cut across the grain. And I'm going to use my carcass saw, which has cross-cut teeth. I'm going to do basically the exact same thing. So I'm going to start it in here. Start it on the far side, get a little nick in there, and then work it back along that line, staying right on that line. Now that I have it developed, you can cut down until it pops off. Just like that. Now we have a cheek and tenon, and that looks pretty darn good. I am happy with that. Nice and smooth across. Now that doesn't look like much of a dovetail, does it? Uh, so we're going to fix that. And what we can do is I'm going to carry this line across. And I'm 
do the same thing on this side. Which if I was thinking ahead of time, I probably would have done that before when I was making this mark. And then we can carry that line across on the top here. And I just want to bring it in a little ways. Now some people are going to get bent out of shape about having a dovetail a very specific angle of 7 to 1, 9 to 1, 10 to 1, whatever you want. Um, it really doesn't matter. As long as it's fatter here than it is here, it's a dovetail. And that angle doesn't make a bit of difference. Yes, if you're going to be a perfectionist, there's going to be some slight variation or difference. But it really doesn't matter because I'm going to be cutting the tail. And then later on, I'm going to have this over here that I can then make this joint to whatever the tail ends up being. So let's make this... Uh, we we'll use this. The marking gauge has a pin in the distance of half the thickness. We're just going to use that. I'm going to put a little pin mark here, right on that line. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And all this does is give me a location to mark to. And so I have a mark in from the side. Whatever that distance is, I don't care. I'm going to grab my straight edge and I'm going to line it up with the corner and that pin mark I just made and draw a line just like that same thing on the other side and I'm trying to be kind of careful and precise even though it really doesn't matter it's always a good practice to practice being careful and precise and so now let me zoom in and see if you guys can see this I don't know if you can, yes. but now we have a dovetail on here, so we need to cut off this little bit and this little bit. <clears throat> so I can set it up on this just like before, start on the side away from me, and I'm going to run down that line. I'm just being careful and slow, because I don't have any reason to go any faster. Do the same thing again on this side. Except for my stop mark is on the other side, so I'm going to be careful that. Just like that. And now we need to cut on an angle. And this is where people really get confused and scared because cutting angles are, oh, that's a scary thing. Um, especially with power tools, because then you have to set up angles and make sure that the power tool is all cutting to it. But with a saw, uh, 90 degrees is an angle. Um, so whatever this angle it is, it doesn't matter. We're just going to cut an angle. The tricky part is we're going to start on this corner, and that can be a little bit different, difficult. So let me show you what I've got for that. So the first thing I do is turn the camera so you can see. And I'm going to turn the board so that that line is basically vertical. And I'm going to grab my dovetail saw. So here we're going to be going through the whole series of saws. The dovetail saw is generally a rip tooth very small teeth, um, but it's a smaller plate, so it gives you far more control. It makes it easier to set it up on there. And I'm going I'm to use all the weight of the saw, let it rest back here on my hand. So my hand is holding the saw. So I can basically saw up here without the saw touching the wood. And I'm just going to nick until I create a little shelf right on that corner. And now I have a ledge that I can cut on and I can cut right down that. Once you get it established, it's just like any other cut. So for one problem I'm going to run into on this one is my back. The back of the saw isn't tall enough. So I'm going to switch back over to the carcass saw and finish the cut with that. Now, before I go any farther, I want to clean this up a little bit. And I'm going to undercut it just a hair. Not by much. I'll just make it fit a little bit tighter and cleaner. Hmm, I got grain reversal. Usually, if your grain is straight, you're not going to run into the problem. But this has a little bit of swirl in it. Making it a little more difficult. And then I want to clean up the shoulder inside a little bit. In there. Just a whisper there. Get rid of that. Now I'm getting picky. <laughs> Let's flip this around, or not flip it around, just tip it over. 
So Tracy Keaton says, do you not like your Japanese saws at all? Um, I am not, uh, I haven't be become proficient with the body mechanic needed for it. And it's, it's a whole different style of cutting. It's just not my cup of tea. I really, really enjoy my Western saws. Um, nothing wrong with the Japanese or Western saw. It's just a slightly different mindset. A very different body mechanic. Body mechanic's named Bob rather than Roy. Oh, come on. That was funny. I, sorry. I... <laughs> I was reading someone, sorry, someone named Bland Bland said, James, how are you? And I was trying to figure out why his name was Bland Bland. <laughs> I was slightly distracted. What were you saying, honey? <laughs> no, I just, I, I, one of these days I want to get into Japanese woodworking and kind of go all out with it and make a, a Japanese bench on the floor and that type of thing. Um, but I haven't gotten there yet. Um, I am very, very comfortable with my Western saws. Once you learn how to use them, they, they give you far more control capability. Um, but when you're learning to use them, Japanese saws tend to follow a line better um, because they take far more force to control. Whereas a Western saw is easier to control, but because of that, it is very easy for it to go off course because if your hand doesn't know how to control it, it's just going to wind up steering um, crazy, if that makes any sense. So now I've cleaned that all up. And look at that. We've got a dovetail. I'm happy. <laughs> um, let me make sure I'm doing this on the right board before I go any further. Let me switch back over to this one. And make sure that this is the way I want it to be. Yes, you need to go on to there. Okay, so there was a question of, from Brian Harmon. Is there a difference in the thickness of your two saws? Um, yes. Uh, my dovetail saw has a slightly thinner plate than my carcass saw. And my carcass saw has a slightly thinner plate uh, than my tenon saw. Um, usually the bigger the plate, the thicker the, 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 the thicker the plate it has to be um, just to keep it stiff. Um, but there's not that much of a difference, and when I'm working with some small detail cut, like I'm cutting off that wedge, the difference between the thickness in these two blades is not going to make enough of a difference to cause a problem. Now, if I'm working on a board that's big and twisted and I have to go in a good ways, then when I start working this one in, it may end up cutting the kerf a little bit wider, but not that much. Uh, make, I'm just making sure I have this all set up before I jump into it, otherwise I'm going to be running into problems because I tend to move very quickly. So let me show you what I've got on this. Oh, I'm loving how fast this switch is over now. The, uh, the camera is, uh, the switch is, is fantastic. It's amazing what a couple hundred bucks in technology does. <laughs> um, yeah, don't tell my wife I spent that though. <laughs> so here's what we've got. Um, this is where it will be and this will need to go into there. The problem is, I need this, I need to know where to put it along here. And the important part is that it ends up being the same distance along that this one is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two boards together. And because I pre-dimensioned um, them all, they're all the exact same width, what I'm going to do is line up the end. And I'm going to draw a nick mark exactly where these two intersect. And that will let me know. That I'm doing this right. Yes, cool. Um, and so that lets me know that this board is going to end up being the same distance along on this board. So now that I have that nick mark and I know where to put it this way, I can line up that nick with this and I can hold this down and I can use the marking knife to then transfer exactly where that dovetail is. And here you can see it really doesn't matter what the shape or size of that dovetail is. At this point, whatever it is, I can draw it out and then I can cut to that line. Woo. So B Power says that for you to get the new part, it must have been on sale. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't even have to crank it. It uses this weird thing called electricity. So there. Now I've transferred my marks over to that. Now the next thing I need to do is transfer them over to the top. So let me zoom in a hair. And so I can put this mar the marking gauge. Let me do it around so this you can see this way. I'm going to put it right into that mark. Slide this up and then cut across. Do the same thing on here. I'm going to do this on all four points where this dovetail meets. And a lot of people like to speed through this marking process. Um, just like it's, it's not the part of woodworking that, every people, uh, that people really enjoy. The problem is that this is where the difference between really good quality work and shoddy work like I do um, because I like to speed through things. Now I have this marking gauge set up already um, and I just need to make sure that I reference off the same side again. So the side with the tape, that's my reference surface. I'm going to keep the fence up against that and I'm going to wonder in the back of my brain why my wife is laughing at me <laughs> and I'll have to go back and read the comments later. And so now I can go light, medium, hard, flip it over, do the same thing on this side, light, medium, hard. Okay, can now I, I have ask my a question? Paint. Sure, what you got? Why, it's just me personally, why do you do the light, medium, hard? That is actually a fantastic question, babe. Um, That's why I'm here. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you try and go really hard right off the bat, uh, a lot of times the pins, or particularly if you're using a wheel marking gauge, they will dig into the grain of the wood, and the grain of the wood may actually drive it off course. And if you do it light with the more control and more force into keeping it in the right place, then that kind of creates a groove. And when your medium one comes through, and it deepens that groove, and then when your hard one comes in, where you, wanna, where you really want to make that groove that you can see, um, it already has a groove that it's following in. It's not going to go off course with the grain. Um, so it just makes it a little bit more foolproof so you're not going to be running off with the grain. Excuse me. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, and what do you guys uh, love to hear your thoughts on possibly doing a series with my wife um, and actually doing like the basics of basics and um, <laughs> going through with my wife and beginning. teaching her how to use a hand plane and how to use a saw and actually documenting it, and I thought that might be something kind of fun. But I don't know, let me know if you think it would be or not. So, um, back over here to two. So now back onto this camera. Let me change focus again. Now here's a problem that we're gonna run into. That my wife is laughing behind my back. And I don't know what it is again. They're just talking about your use of electricity and then one of them mentioned that you live a Mennonite life in electric charge world, and it just made me think of when we used to live. Yeah, the Amish, the Amish laugh at me for not, ha for not using electricity. But there's now, a difference. Yeah. Between a Mennonite and Amish, so. Um, one of the problems is a lot of times your, your, um, your bench hook has a 90 degree slot, 45 degree slot, but this dovetail isn't going to fit either of those slots. So you hold it off to the side, and you grab a clamp so you don't mess it up, or you be like me and just go ahead and mess it up and be okay with that. And I'm just gonna create a little bit of a nick here. And I'm gonna slowly work it back along that line until I have that kerf established where I want it to be. Actually, in this case, I need to move the kerf over a little bit. And now I'm just gonna go to town and cut all the way down to that depth mark. And I'm using very light pressure, except for I cut past my light mark on the other side. Flip it around and do the same thing over here. Light nick. Here we established. Now the hard part's done. Now the fun part. We get to work with chisels. 
And I don't know why, but I love working with chisels. So I'm going to show you a slightly different way of doing this. Um, actually, it's not too much different from how I did it last time with the, uh, with the half lap. Now that we've cut that out, we can come in with a chisel and pop out the waste. Okay, so Grab me a mallet and a chisel. What? I just have a question. What's that? David Wist has a question. I think the, he meant, are these a slight offset at the full lap that will transfer to the dovetail? Aren't these a slight is offset? There, isn't there? Maybe it's isn't there a slight offset at the full lap that will transfer to the dovetail? Uh, I don't know what he's saying. Okay. Sorry, David, clarify it and I'll you try and get back clarify, to it. I'll ask you again. <laughs> um, so, now we're back here. I'm going to put my chisel in about a third of the way down. And I'm going to aim it up. I want to be shooting up towards the stars. Because if I anything, I don't know where this grain is. I don't want it to run down and go past on the other side. And I'm going to tap it. Knock out some, move along. I'm going to go down a little deeper, about halfway. And the grain seems to be obeying on this one. So I'm just kind of learning about where the grain is going. This one actually seemed to be cooperating very nicely. They're about a sixteenth inch away from the marking gauge line. Now if I went right down to that marking gauge line, right off the bat, there'd be a good chance that it would run away and I wouldn't be able to catch it. And I'm going to go as close to that marking gauge line as I can without actually hitting it. Now when I did the half lap, I showed you how to use it with a router plane. I don't think I showed you how to do it with just a chisel. So I'm going to do this one with just a chisel. So now I'm close to that. I'm going to back it up just a little bit. Trying to stay out of that marking gauge line as long as possible. I'm just going to push it in there. Now I think I have to go in. I think I can do one more out of the marking gauge line. There we go. And now I have to go into the marking gauge line because I can't cut anything more off of that. Let me, zoom, let me see if I can do this. Let me see if I can use the amazing things of zoom and actually show you what I'm talking about. I don't know if that's going to get me close enough. Whoa. That's, oh, oh. Does that look good? That's fine. Okay, so now what I want to do is put that into the marking gauge line. I'm still going, to, still going to shoot a little bit high, not terribly, and I'm just going to wiggle it side to side. And wiggle it side to side. What's that? Uh... Just taking my time. Patience. It's not only a virtue, it's probably the best tool in your toolbox. Oh, look at you get all deep there. I know. <laughs> Maybe because I actually know your amount of patience. No, it's the other thing. I had a <laughs> chat with Confucius earlier today. <laughs> oh, that brought back a good memory of a joke from high school that probably should not be uttered here. <laughs> And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to start about a third of the way down, aiming up, tapping out. And I can see which way the grain is going. Woo, that popped off. About halfway to the line again. On this side, the grain is diving more um, away from you to my left. Keep going about halfway down again. This is, I, I don't know why, but this is so much fun to me. This is the part that I'm, I, I, I get goosebumps about and my hands start shaking because the, the adrenaline is running in here. Yeah, is that fun? <laughs> I love this part. I don't know why. It's just so much fun. I'm just outside the marking gauge line. Oh, I actually think I went into the marking gauge line on that one. Still aiming high. And 
Okay, so now we're getting in there. I'm going to put the mallet down. And I'm going to take out this excess in the middle. Because I was aiming high, I got to take out this lump. And now I'm going to go right into that marking gauge line. Rocking it back and forth. Now before I go any farther, I'm going to grab a square or a straight edge or anything like that. I'm going to put it on here and I'm going to see if I have a lump in the middle or a valley. In this case, I have a little bit of a valley here. I went a little bit too deep on the far side. Uh, but a valley is not a problem. Um, a valley is okay because a valley can be filled with glue. A hill, on the other hand, is a problem. So I'm going to keep doing the same thing. Right into that marking gauge line. Okay, I have a couple questions. Sure, what's that? Okay, first the duck says, why do they make cross-cut dovetail saws? Um, well, if you put a fleam on a saw, which makes it a cross-cut saw, uh, it usually has a little bit cleaner exit cut. Ooh, and in this case, I've got a valley here I need to remove. So i got to see where that's at. So I can use the straight edge to see. Here's where the valley's at. Um, and so if you have a, uh, if you put fleam into it, you get a cl slightly cleaner exit wound to the cut. Um, which a lot of people like that. And, and a lot of dovetail saws um, use like a hybrid cut where they'll put like 10 degrees of fleam. It's really not a lot of fleam in there. I like mine to just be straight across rip, rip cuts, but that's just a personal preference. I guess it all just depends on your own personal taste. You never know until you try it though. So now we clean that out. And then I got one more question for you. Pretty good. What's that? Gregor Hinckley says, does it matter what side of the dovetail you start on the thin or wide end? Nope, doesn't matter at all. I'll just start on whichever side is closest. So now here is the moment of truce. Truce or truth? Truce. <laughs> this is when I throw in the towel, I raise the white flag, and I run away. Now we got to see. Uh, theoretically, it's all done. If it goes together perfectly, then um, everything is amazing and everything is awesome. Um, oh, but if no, it doesn't. It's in my head. I thought it might work. Let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens. I think I need to trim up a little bit on this tail. I curse on you for putting that song in my head. Oh, this is going to be a nice one. Oh, I'm liking this. Now, I can notice over here. Let me see if I can show you guys this. Um, I love being able to zoom in and focus on this. What I'm doing is I'm putting this in here, and the side away from me, this side over here, looks really good. But this side here, I can see that there's like this bulge. There's this bulge right here. And I could be because of the tail. But in this case, I think it's actually because of the pin side. There's a little bit of a gap there. So what I'm going to start by doing is cleaning this up and going right back to that marking gauge line. Can you take another question? Sure. So what is a fleam? Fleam is the angle that the tooth is um, cut at. Um, was that your question or no, one of No, that's from Gingerbread. Ginger Beard. Okay. He's a ginger. We like gingers in our house. We do like gingers. Um, and if you really want to know, I have, several, I have several videos on sharpening saws where I talk about it, especially if you go back to the most recent ones. I talk about fleam quite a bit. Um, but fleam is basically, if you're cutting the teeth of the saw, it is the angle at which you put the file to the saw. Um, usually on a, a standard cross cut, you're, you're put about 30 degrees of fleam in there. A hybrid is at like 10 degrees of fleam, and then a rip saw has no fleam, or it's kept at 90 degrees to the saw. Um, so, I don't know if that answers your question, but if you look at the difference between a rip saw and a hand saw, or a, Crosscut so I can see that. So let's try this. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. 
I could I could get a hammer and I could pound that down in. Here, let me see where I can do it. And I could pound that down in and it would fit just like a snug in a bug. But then I'd never be able to pull it apart <laughs> well. Sorry. Did I just say snug in a bug? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see what I've got. So here, I'm really, really tight right here. And my shoulder is good. I'm taking my time on this because I really want this one to be nice. Uh, dovetails just look so nice when they're, well, they look nice when they're nice. <laughs> so I'm going to pull this apart. Go. And I'm going to trim that up just a little bit more with the chisel. And usually this chisel work at the end, this is what kills most joints. This is where most people take off too much with the chisel. You just need a tiny little bit. Here, let me flip it around so I can show you what I'm talking about. And yeah, I want to zoom in on this corner right here. There we go. So, I'm just going to be taking off just a little bit. Just kind of cleaning it out like that. And that's all I need to try and make this fit again. Let's pound it. <laughs> Here we go, ready? Let's see how it goes. Leather faces. Oh, I'm happy. That's pretty. That is, that's what I'm talking about. You run a plane over that, smooth it out, and that'll become like glass. That is happiness right there. And a lot of people look at um, their rough joints, and if you run your finger on this, there's, there's a bit of a catch here. It's perfectly flush here, perfectly flush here, and it's good and flush there. Um, but if I flip it over to this side, this edge, it's perfectly flush. What's happened is, while this has been sitting here, the thickness of this board has increased ever so slightly. It's absorbed a little bit of water, um, and it's absorbed it slightly faster on this side than this side. Or it's warped ever so slightly because it's been sitting around for a few weeks. Um, and so the, the trick is join it together, and then you run a plane over it, and it brings everything into nice um, working order. So let's try this. I am happy with that. Let's see where we're at now. Um, that one goes in there. And then this one goes in, where is it? There it is, in there. And now we're starting to see how this join room window is coming together. So we've got that, and we have this joint done, and we have this joint done. And so now we get to start doing all the rest of them. And this is, this is actually starting to look like, like this. <laughs> So that is the dovetail half lap joint. Um, really nice joint, and I, I like it. It's uh, it's kind of nice because um, unlike a traditional, unlike a normal half lap like this, uh, which if you're doing a half lap on the end of the board, it would be able to slide off. In this case, if you have any force that's going this way, it stops it. So the only way it can come off is down that way. So there's basically only one method of rotation that it can have. And I am really pleased with how that came out. Uh, so, are there any questions? All right. So, backing up a little bit. Okay. Um, I get distracted by their mocking. Um, <laughs> la, 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 la. There was, oh, did you add a bevel in the sides when you were cleaning things up with the dove? Um, if you're talking about undercutting a little bit, in other words, um, like, you know, the tenon, the shoulder, I would cut the shoulders in at a slight angle down. Um, I didn't on this one. I did on, um, 
Oh, the, the tenon joint, uh, the mortise and tenon joint. I bubbled those down a little bit. This one, I just wanted to play it straight on. Um, usually, I undercut things a little bit. I cut a little bit of a bevel into the, the shoulders um, because, number one, you can't see into that. It doesn't make any difference in structural quality. Um, it just basically guarantees you're going to get a really nice fit as long as the edge of the shoulder is nice and clean. The edge of the shoulder is what butts up against the other piece of the wood. Um, so usually I do a little bit of undercutting, but occasionally um, I like to kind of challenge myself and keep everything perfectly fat, flat and straight just for my own um, sanity. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Hang on. I got to Hope that answers the question. This microphone's in my way. Yeah, is, have they talked anything about the audio and the... Um, it's the, better. You don't, you don't sound like timing? a B Chinese movie. <laughs> is, uh, is the timing working with the... I guess so. No one said... Good. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Um, and then the duck says, "Okay, why do you know? We talked about we talked about a crosscut tenon saw, right? No, a crosscut tenon saw. Yeah, he's apparently looking at saws, so he has lots ah, of saws. Well, um, okay, if you're looking at uh, Veritas, it makes my uh, uh, my carcass saw and my tenon saw. Uh, Veritas has what they call a crosscut tenon saw, and they also have a rip cut." Carcass saw. Um, a carcass saw, by definition, is a cross-cut saw. Um, basically, they're saying that they have a saw the same size as your average carcass saw that has rip teeth on it. Or they have a tenon saw. They have a saw that's about the same size as a tenon saw with cross-cut teeth on it. Um, <laughs> that... Yeah. Uh, it doesn't bother me quite as bad as it bothers like Shannon Rogers, um, but it still kind of bothers me. If you put cross-cut teeth on a tenon saw, it's no longer a tenon saw. Um, it's a big cross-cut back saw. <laughs> um, usually when you have a taller plate, you're going to be cutting the cheeks of a joint. And in which case, you don't need uh, cross-cut teeth. And so it's, uh, there really isn't a huge reason for that. Um, the same thing as with a, uh, with a carcass saw, 90% of the time I'm cutting across the grain um, and I don't need a rip tooth. Um, that being said, um, if I do need to use a cross cut in a ripping manner, oh well, I'll, I'll use a cross cut in a ripping manner. There is no law that says you have to use a cross cut saw to cross cut and a rip saw to rip cut. And there's no reason why I can't use a carcass saw to cut the cheeks of a tenon and a tenon saw to cut up a carcass. Um, you can use it for whatever you want. Um, that being said, when you're buying it, I don't see a reason to buy a tenon saw with cross-cut teeth. There just isn't a good purpose for that, like a carcass saw with rib teeth. Um, I've never really run into that. But each their own. Um, there's a reason Veritas makes them, because people want them. So. Someone out there likes them. <laughs> yeah. What you got? All right. Um, who makes the... Is your dovetail saw Veritas also? No. My dovetail saw is from Bearcat. Bearcat Woodworking. Oh, that's right. Here, let me show you this. Um, and uh, this is just... It's one of my pride and joys. Uh, love this saw. It is made of myrtle wood with this uh, beautiful knot work on it. Um, and uh, yeah, Bearcat saws... Good luck getting one of his saws. Um, he sells them incredibly cheap, and I don't know why he sells them so cheaply. Um, but because of that, they're really hard to get because I don't think he... He was taking orders, but he's now, like, backlogged till December, and he's no longer taking orders right now. Um, so it's really hard to get them. But one of these days, I'm going to buy an entire set of his saws. I just love what he does. Um, although I might actually make my own back saws here eventually. We'll see. They make a make a good video. What else we got? What time is it? Five? Oh, we were doing really good on time. Yeah, well, that's because you had no glitches. I like it. i got to fix the one last piece in the chain and we'll, then everything's set. All right. Uh, I think... Oh, let's see. There was that one we were trying to clarify earlier. So they said... Um, the one about, let me see if I go back even further. Oh, about the slight offset of the full lap transferring to the dovetail. 
there was a mention of there is a kerf gap from a mistake from the half flap. And you use uh, that as a reference for a location. So the yes. concern is a placement issue. Aha, uh -huh. someone has a really good memory. And I, I was thinking about that when I put it up. Uh, uh, yeah, and if anyone... Uh, man, I forgot what I was just going to say. Oh, well, I'll show you this. Um, uh, yeah, when I made the, the half lap, um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it here, but there is a gap here and a little bit of a gap here. Um, because this can actually slide a little bit side to side. Um, and so, yes, I took that into consideration because that gap will move this one way or the other. I slid it all the way to one side uh, so that the ends of these were all the same. That was something I determined off camera. Um, and so I know that the measurement from, let me make sure I get this right. Yes, the measurement from this end to the gap is correct. The measurement from this end to the gap is not correct. So I just had to make sure I, I figured that out ahead of time because I messed up on this, making the gap for this board a little wider than it needs to be. So yes, good memory about that. Um, but yes, I thought about that ahead of time so that I made sure I, I measured from the right end to the point. Um, otherwise, it would be a 16th off moving this way. Um, but as it is now, you can see with all three of these together, they all touch at the same point, which is really nice. Happiness. <laughs> we can't see what he's pointing out. Um, am I out of focus? No, I think you switch cameras. Am I on one? On You're two. on the big one. Oh, not the zoomed in one. Oh, there we go. Let me go there, back to this again. Hey, okay, hey. Um, <laughs> good technology. Bad brain. <laughs> um, let me show you when I when I was making the half lap. This was like. Uh, Two lives ago, um, I cut, there's, there's a gap here and a gap here. So this board can actually slide up and down. So I had to change the distance. I had to make sure, did I measure from this end of the board to the edge of the gap or from this end of the board to the edge of the gap? Um, and I knew ahead of time I needed to go from this end of the board to the edge of the gap. And I just made sure I kept track of that off camera um, so that I could keep track of it. So when you see these, all three of these feet now touch the ground at the same point. Otherwise, if I measured from the other end, um, then this would have been moved off by a sixteenth of an inch um, because I messed up on that joint. Oh well. The five-year-old's doing opera. Yeah. Yes, you might be hear you might be hear the uh, rain dance that's happening upstairs, <laughs> aka a kid running through the kitchen. So, uh, let's see. A couple questions came in. Um, So he had two of them. I'm not sure. I'm going to go with his most recent one. It said, is a, sh is a sash saw good for making cuts that are snug as a bug? Uh, no, a sash <laughs> saw makes cuts that are as snug as a rug. Big difference there, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then you get, yeah, I mean, there is a name for every type of saw imaginable because we are humans and we like to name things. Um, so then you get into like, you know, your sash saws and your uh, shipwright saws and your beam saws and, um, and anything with a back, um, then there's like, there's like 15 different types of tenon saw. Um, and you can get into really serious arguments when you get to people about saw types. So that's, that's a fun one actually to start someone up and say, hey, nice tenon saw you've got there. I'm like, what, that's not a tenon saw. That's like, yeah. <laughs> Those are fun. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm vindictive. No, not you. So, Devinder <laughs> Coker? Mm, sorry if I messed that up. Do you sharpen your cabinet scraper? And if so, do you plan to make a video on that? Yes. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is a cabinet scraper. It's basically a jig for holding a card scraper so your thumbs don't get sore. Um, and I have a video on, um, I have a video on making I don't have a video on making the card for it, um, but yes, I do have a video on sharpening the card for it. It's probably about a year and a half old, um, so the video quality might not be amazing on it. But if you look, if you search for wood by right cabinet scraper, um, it'll be one of the top three videos that pop up. Because um, I had a series of videos that I did with the cabinet scraper a while ago about going over how do you sharpen it, how do you use it, uh, what's the difference between a sharp cabinet scraper and a card scraper. But yes, I do have a video on how do you sharpen the cabinet scraper. 
Um, I don't shape, I don't sharpen it or turn the burr as much as I do with a card scraper because it's a little thicker. It uh, I I, tur I turn the burr on it a little bit heavier, um, so it lasts a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, I still end up using it. Like if I'm using this for 10 minutes or so, I'm probably going to stop and sharpen it again. All right, so. Steve Winner asked, do you plan to re-release shorter speed cuts of just these nine joints for those wanting to replicate your window? Um, I have thought about that, and I don't know if I will. Uh, the reason being is it's a lot of editing, a lot of editing to, to cut this down, uh, because I'm talking 99% of the time, um, except for when my wife is talking. Um, and so well, that's, there are the highlights, no, <laughs> yes. um, and, and so editing down that hour's worth of video into like a 10, 15 minute long video that gives a little high points um, it would be very, very difficult. Um, I may end up doing something where I revoice over everything so I can get the, the needed information in there. Um, but I don't know if I'm, if I'm going to do that yet. I, I, it may actually be easier to remake the window and to shoot them all individually as a video intended for that. Um, that's something I'm going back and forth on, so I don't know. If you guys would like to see that, let me know. I'd like to hear. Maybe I'll do it with my wife as her beginning project. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Duck says, do you have a table saw? I have a table saw. I have a table saw. I have a planer. I have an orbital sander. I have a router. Um, I've got a joiner, though I don't have a motor for it. Um, and they're all sitting up in the garage. Uh, but my table saw, though, uh, I have a table saw, but it was something that was purchased from Menards by someone else a while ago, and I bought it for 25 bucks. Um, it doesn't have a fence. It doesn't have a riving knife. Um, it has no safety feature at all. The electrical box is hanging by the two wires. Uh, it's, it's a scary thing. Uh, my, my fence is literally a 2x4 that I have clamped on with C-clamps, and so adjusting it is a pain. Um, so I don't use it very often because uh, it's actually faster for me to grab a handsaw and just cut the board than it is for me to pull out the table saw, pull out all the systems, setting up the fence, and uh, what would take me like 5 minutes to make a rip might take me 45 minutes to set up the saw. Um, but yes, I have a table saw. Do I use it much? No. <laughs> Except for when I wanted to annoy the kids. They think that these hand saws are loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Bogdas Matera, Mataras, I'm going to butcher that. Sorry, it's Portuguese. On the card scraper, what do you use to burn the edge and what angle? Yeah, Portugal. Um, uh, for burnishing, I have a couple different things that I've used. Um, this is a knife steel, um, so it's used for, um, for sharpening knives. Um, and all you need is something that is harder than the card that you're burnishing. Um, and so I have used this for a long time, uh, but it's not really that hard, and if my card scrapers um, like I have a couple that are a decent hardness steel. Uh, it takes a while to turn a burr with this. Um, but yes, you can get one of these. Um, they're just designed for knives, kitchen knives, and they work just as well. Um, you can also use files. Um, if you get a file that is a safe edge, in other words, an edge that doesn't have any filing on it, um, you can use that to burnish. Uh, what I've been using recently is this little carbide rod. Um, and this is, this is kind of cool. It's just this quarter inch rod about six, seven inches long, um, but it's made out of carbide, which is a lot harder than steel. Um, and that's what they use as the teeth on saw blades and router blades. Um, and I use this to burnish now because it's so much harder that even if I have a really hard steel um, rod uh, card, this, this works really well. So, yeah. Cool. Right. What are we so getting into? Duck said, no, a table saw, not a table saw. It's a hand saw that's called a table saw. Yes, it's on the table. <laughs> as, as in a saw made for cutting tables? Well, I'm going to be cutting this table here in a little bit, and so I guess uh, one of those will turn into a table saw. 
I don't know. He's been looking at saws. He's curious. I, I have never heard of a saw called a table saw, but uh, it would not surprise me. There are a crazy amount of names for really detailed saws. Um, and no, a carcass saw is not called a carcass saw because it cuts up animal carcasses. Um, it's because it is used in the joinery of the carcass of a, um, of a case or uh, like in the dresser without the drawers and without the side panels and things like that. The frame is called a carcass. Um, and so that's where a carcass saw gets this name. Fun details. Are we about done or? I think so. So, okay. um, yeah, I don't think there's anything particular coming up. Uh, oh, I do want to say I have a, um, uh, I'm looking at going out to the uh, Pacific Northwest, um, oh, come on, what do they call it? The Pacific Northwest Tool Collectors. Uh, and they have a meet that happens once every two years, um, and it's in Oregon. And I'm really thinking about going out to that. It's kind of like the Midwest Tool Collectors, um, but a bigger deal because it's one of the few things that happens on the West Coast. And it's big enough that if you are anywhere on the West Coast, all the way down to Southern California and whatnot, um, there's a lot of people who make the trip to ha make it happen because it's one of the big places to get hand tools. Um, so I'm thinking about making that happen. Uh, I don't know if I will yet because it's going to be a fairly heavy expense for me to make that trip happen. Uh, I'm thinking about possibly doing a GoFundMe for that because uh, I'd like to get out to the West Coast and meet many of you. Um, and also it'd be a good way to actually show some of the people on the West Coast um, a couple other places where you can get tools out there. Um, and it's not just a, a Midwest and East Coast thing. Um, so if you are on the West Coast and would like to see me, let me know. Um, might, make that, uh, might make that trip happen. Um, and if, if I get enough, maybe bring my wife out because I'd like to get her to come to a couple trips. See the, the face behind the, uh, the action. They see my face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't know how short I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, well, I think that is about it. Uh, is there anything I'm forgetting? Oh, I'm sure there's lots of things. There's always but things. But not right now. So I think that's about it. Until um, next time. Have a wonderful day.